talking about intentionality, and I have to share some of this stuff. I got her, I got her permission, and then Becca sent me some that I got to share too because it was so great. Allie begins to tell me that every summer she has a summer project for the kids. So her two oldest boys last year decided, and they got to pick to crochet, and they spent the summer like crocheting and, and crocheting gifts. And I thought that was so fun to pick a gift. Uh, I can't remember, what did you say? Friendship bracelets this year is at least one of them, right? For Keaton. Did Deacon decide yet? Hasn't decided. That's my boy. That's my boy. <laughs> but I thought, how fun to have something intentional and have it there. Okay, this is where you want to pull out your pens if you haven't. She does not allow any treats for her kids until they've had six servings of fruits and vegetables. Now, they can have all six for breakfast. That's fine, right? But they have to have six servings of fruits and vegetables, and they know it. But I, I, I instantly went, man, do I even have six servings in my house right now? <laughs> like, if they wanted six different things, do I have it? Is it cut up? Is it ready? Like, that takes intentionality. Then I also, I heard somebody else say it too. I was like, do I make this a win? Like, a bite of a strawberry is a great serving, baby. Good job, you know? Uh, what is the serving size? What's the actual? But, but I loved the intentionality of it. But here's what I took away and loved the most from our talk. Is she talked about not intentionally uh, loving them as a mom, but intentionally loving them the way that they need to be loved, the way that they need to receive love, intentionally making sure that they feel loved and valued. And I thought that's a completely different thing than what comes natural of just doing right and loving them the easiest way to love them, but to intentionally love them the way they want to be loved, I thought was phenomenal. Uh, Becca shared one. I should have put it on a slide, Becca, if I had been thinking. Spring break, she puts together this awesome schedule. Uh, was it on like a poster board? Here's sheets. Oh, it was so good. So on the fridge, each column is a kiddo, and she's got the days mapped out for spring break. And I, I guess what I thought was so cool, that as you move down, they could stamp them, and it was so fun. But any of you have way more fun anticipating the vacation than what the vacation actually is? I was like, we could teach our kids that early. Like, how excited were they for that picnic? Like, they had to be so fun. But it took intentionality to create it, write it, plan it. But I bet you had a phenomenal spring break. I also bet you deviated from it, didn't you? Of course, that's what it is. But you had a plan. You were intentional with it. And I loved that. So I'm thinking about this with Allie, and I go home on, on, and thinking through how can I be intentional with my kids. And then I started thinking about how intentional our God is with us. And it started rocking my world. So a little over three years ago, I went to a women's retreat. Um, it was up in the Rocky Mountains. It was so beautiful. It was captivating. Four days, it was so hard to go. My, my youngest was only a year, and it just killed me to get on that plane. But I knew I was so depleted, and I would come back a better woman. And I, I feel like I did. It was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. While I was there, uh, during one of the sessions, the speaker challenged us to ask God to show us his love uniquely. And she went into this story about how God gives her heart. Right? And, and if you've ever, I, I know a lot of you know Ginger, uh, our women's pastor here, she, she will receive hearts from God the same time. She'll be walking on a hike, and there it is, like right in the middle of the path, a, a heart. Or she fell once. This was one of my favorites. She showed me a picture of her scab. It was like a perfect heart. So weird, but it's like, I got you, baby. Like, <laughs> but she would find hearts. And I'm sitting in this session, and I'm kind of laughing, because I feel like God and I have this rainbow thing, which God and all of us have a rainbow thing. There's a pretty significant promise tied to that. But there was, there was one point where I was praying so hard uh, at my house, and I look out the window, and I just was overwhelmed with his presence, and hear this rainbow. It was a double rainbow, and it landed right in my front yard. And it just, it just rocked my world. And ever since then, I felt like when I needed him, he never had to, but he'd give me this little glimpse of a rainbow, or, or something would catch the window just right, and I would get a rainbow in the house. And, and I just felt like it was his way of uniquely pursuing me, and loving me, and making me feel wanted, right? Well, here we are at the top of the Rockies, and I'm supposed to be praying for a rainbow. It is crystal blue skies. There is not a cloud in the sky. It is stunning, and I feel... Uh, 
I don't know if ashamed is the right word, but pretty close. Like, how could I ask a God so good for something so unnecessary? I thought, I just, I can't do it. I can't do it. And, and she really pushed. She really challenged. We walk out. So I, I finally did. I prayed in my head. I'm like, all right, Lord, I'd love to see it. I love you no matter what, but I'd love to see it. And I'm walking out and I can't even look up, right? I can't do it. So I stand there for a little bit. And all of a sudden I look up and I didn't see a rainbow, but I saw this, this flock of geese honking and flying by and the most gorgeous, gorgeous view of the Rocky Mountains. And I just started to tear up and I was like, Lord, everything you've done is so good. And I, I feel like I hear this little whisper of look up. And I, I look up and there is the most vibrant, beautiful rainbow all the way around the sun all the way around the sun. There is nothing special about me that's different than what's about you. I feel like God wants to love us uniquely and pursue us uniquely. And I wondered at that moment when we're talking about intentionality with our kids, how many of us really even open our eyes? How many of us would have even looked up? You know, it took me, it took me a minute. Like it wasn't like a, what's up? It was more like, oh, did I hear that right? Did I hear that right? Oh, I don't want to be disappointed. I don't want to be disappointed. Oh my goodness, like it's really there. But how many of us really allow God to pursue us, love us, want us? He doesn't need us, but he seeks us. She used the word romance. He wants to romance us. And I just, I was like, ew. Because I feel like cultural feels very like sexual with romance. And I was just like, oh, that feels weird. But it's not. I mean, true romance is to, to adore and pursue and seek. And it was just phenomenal. It was such a phenomenal moment. And I would love love my kids to feel wanted and needed and loved. So let's read really quick. Let's read 1 Corinthians 13. How many of you know it? You know where I'm going with this, right? It's like if you've ever been to a wedding in your life, you've probably heard this this verse. So verse 1, if I speak in tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or clanging cymbal. If I have a gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, and I give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. Here's where you key in, verse 4. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. So, So I'm I'm thinking about the five love languages when I do this because I want all of those. I I want my kids to feel all of those. I want them to feel that I trust them, you know, and that they can trust me. I want them to feel hopeful. I want them to feel protected, patient, kind, you know, all, all of this. I want them to know that. And I'm thinking about the love languages. Everybody know what the five love languages are? A few. If you don't know, it's such a great book. Gary Chapman's such a great book. He does another one that's for children, five love languages for children. And he talks about how to figure out your love language. So basically your love language is how do you receive love best, right? And he talks about figuring it out for our children. And this is where when I had dinner with Allie, we were talking about intentionally loving our kids and making sure they feel loved. This is where my head kept going is back to my kids' love languages, right? So, well, let me tell you a story about Georgia. So this one was funny. Georgia was hard for me to figure out their love language. Gary Chapman says, if you want to figure out your kiddo's love language, you observe their behavior. What are are they doing? How are they showing love? Okay, that's one. Uh, What are they complaining about? What are they complaining and constantly asking for? Asking for is the the third. And it dawned on me that she literally draws a picture and gives me a note every day. Like she gives me gifts all the time and gifts are not my love language. So I did not register at all that that was hers. I mean, that's five. I'll take gifts, don't get me wrong, but it really is like five out of five. Uh, But her love language is gifts. Now, Charlotte, my Charlie, uh, she's quality time which is totally my love language. We get, we get along so well with this. We started doing Starbucks dates. This is the one thing I'm really intentional about because it dawned on me at one point that my kids are the things that never enter my schedule. 
And so I literally have a date with Charlotte and a date with Georgia on my schedule because I knew if I didn't put it in there, it wouldn't happen. And they look so forward to it. And if for any reason it alters, we just reschedule it, talk about it ahead of time and reschedule it. We go to Starbucks and Charlotte and I will sit there and talk and hang out. We get like 15 minutes into our first date and she's like, all right, let's go. And I'm just blown away. I'm expecting like an hour, but it took 15 minutes of quality time for her to feel so loved and we left and... Georgia, I bought her a cake pop. She was thrilled. We didn't even have to stay and talk, and she probably still would have been equally as happy. We did stay and talk. That's all she actually wanted was, was a cake pop. Uh, <laughs> so thinking about loving our kids intentionally got me thinking about how often I try to love my little Georgia by spending time with her. Whereas on Monday, of course, I'm... I'm Heavy, or Tuesday, I'm heavy into this, this talk prep and rehearsing. So I'm thinking about loving her intentionally. And we're walking in yokes, and she sees these flowers, and she just lights up. They're $3. And I'm looking at her. I get down on, all, on my knees, and I said, baby, would you like mommy to buy you some flowers? And she just, oh, really? I was like, yeah, let's do it. She, she just loves them. She's been re-gifting them one at a time because she's so excited, and that's how she feels so loved. But I would challenge you all to, to figure out what your love language is and what your spouse's love language is and what your kids' love languages are and love them that way this summer and wonder if we're spending enough intentionality in loving them. Now, if they're below four, here's what Gary Chapman says. It's really hard to identify. Really hard to identify. You've got to love them in all five until you figure it out. And not just that. This was, this was something I had never caught. But it's critical that we love them in all five so that they can learn to love and receive love in all five love languages, which makes sense. I hadn't thought about that. So that's one of my goals is to be intentional about loving them. And then it got me thinking about like what I really am intentional about for summer. Are anybody else like hopelessly optimistic that it's like, we're going to go to the lake. We're going to go every year. I'm like, we're going to camp at least three times. We have not camped since Charlotte was born seven years ago. But <laughs> Every May, I'm like, baby, this is a year. We're going to go camping. We get on this kick of researching trailers, and then we don't pull the trigger on anything. It's great. Uh, and I'm thinking about these big adventurous stories that we think make them feel so loved. So we went, I took, I am an idiot. That's all there is to it. I took my daughter to Disneyland when she was two. Okay. Two. I am about seven months pregnant. My husband does not like crowds nor lines, and I bring my mom with us because we have one kid, and sometimes when you have one kid, you still feel like you have backup. You need backup, right? So for whatever reason, I feel like I need backup, so I bring my mom, who is due for a knee replacement. It's like 90 degrees, and we're in line, and I bust out the sunscreen and spray it straight in Charlie's eye, like just straight. I mean, it was windy. I didn't intentionally spray it in her eye. It was windy. But she is crying, and we're, like, still at the back of the Like, we hadn't even moved up in the line. And I was cracking up because this whole vacation, you know, I have all this stuff, just huge dreams and plans, and I cart them all around Disneyland. And finally, by the end, I am done pouring out to these cranky people when I'm leaving, right? My mom doesn't even ride rides, so she's just walking in line with us and hanging out, right? So I'm so done. And then two days later, we go to the beach with zero plans. But I did prepare everything we could need, right? So I had all the snacks. I had games for the beach and towels and, and all the things. It was the best day of our entire vacation. And it was literally like sand and water. But when Charlotte wanted to chase waves, we chased waves. When she wanted to dig in the sand, we dig, dug in the sand. We just were more intentional on her so instead of what we were doing it, it was who we were doing it with. And it was such a mind shift for me. I'm so type A and want to check off. Like, we had the best summer because we did lake days. We went camping. We did this. We made all these memories. But the truth is, is none of that matters to them. What's their love language? What's going to make them feel so loved? When I just spent time with her, how she wanted to spend time, she filled up. I don't know if I can afford my second child. She likes a lot of gifts. No, that's not true. She, she is totally good with a note. I walked out this morning and I left a little, love you, baby, and that was it. And, and I'm sh I, I don't know, I haven't asked, but typically that fills her, fills her bucket. So do our children feel as loved, pursued, and wanted as what we should feel from our God? And do we feel loved, pursued, and wanted 
from the God who loves you and pursues you and wants you. That was, that was what I was wrestling with. So I want to talk a little bit about, a little more about intentionality of summer. When we make that list of adventures and things we want to do, if, 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 when we make that plan, does anybody know that saying, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail? I feel like that's so true. I think about these moms, and if this is you, I am there with you at times. But I think about those moms that dread summer that absolutely dread summer because it is so hard and so much work. And there are times at the end of a weekend where I'm exhausted and I'm ready for my kids to go back up to, back to school, right? There, there's definitely times for that. Don't get me wrong. But it has nothing to do with them. It has 100% to do with my soul space and myself, how exhausted I am, right? Nothing to do with them. But it dawned on me, if I want my kids to feel pursued and loved and they know I can't wait for them to go back to school, like, our Heavenly Father would never love us like that. He wants us in all our dirt and all the things. The last thing I want my baby to feel is I can't wait for September. I'm done. You know, but how easy is it to do that when we're not intentional on getting that soul space, too? So intentional on loving them the way they need to be loved, but intentional on our soul space. I'm breaking on Allie. You should just talk, Allie, because all I'm doing is pouring on your words. But I was talking to Allie, and her two older boys know that at 1230, it's... Head to your room. We got quiet time. And she takes time because she knows that she needs it. And she's a better mom if she reads and relax. And, and she's introverted, which I don't understand because you don't seem like it. But that's what fills her soul, right? That's what fills her soul. So she intentionally takes time to do that. I am awful. I give all things until I'm cranky at 7 o'clock and then we end our day not as great. I'm getting better at that, by the way. It's been my big intentionality this year. I'm getting better about not being mean mom after 7. Uh, but what if we were intentional this summer, what would you choose? What would you choose to do? What would you be most intentional about? I'm, I'm actually asking, so somebody tell me. What would you be most intentional about this summer? You guys are gonna succeed. <laughs> That's great, <laughs> you don't have to do anything you're doing. Is there anything you would want to be super intentional about? Let me give you an example. One thing that's super important to me is I want my kids to know and feel the word of God. Because when they go out into this big, bad world, it's the only solid foundation I can give them to leap off of, right? So I want them to know the word. So that's one thing I want to be really intentional about. And I'm telling you, we suck at family devotionals. I read my Bible on my phone more often than I read it in the book, right? Like we, I still, actually, we moved in January. I still haven't found my Bible. But <laughs> I got it on my phone. We're fine. But I want to be intentional of getting my kids into the Word. Is there anything you guys can think of, help me out here, that you want to be intentional with your kids about? How many babies you got? Oh, girl. You can do it, though. You can do it. That's, that's so dead on. Even if it's 10 minutes one-on-one -on -one with each kiddo is such a game changer. I remember Sarah talking about breakfast dates with Paxton, and I just loved it. That was actually what got me doing the Starbucks dates, is after you talked about that, because he would just light up to go have breakfast with his mommy. What else? What was that? Spottings? Spa days. We should be friends. Spa days at home. Any of you have girls and play spa days with them? It's so much fun. They sell so many cute little like dollar masks that are just a baby wipe that smells good that they put on their face. But it's so fun to do that. They feel so loved and cared for and special. What else? One more. Somebody help me out. Oh. Speaking intentionally kind to, to mirror what you want them to do. So they speak intentionally kind. That's so good. That's so good. It's so easy to be frustrated. I, I think really when I, when I look at this, that's what I want is those fruits of the spirit, right? I want, I want them to feel like I am kind. I am joyous. I want to have fun. I want, like, I want to intentionally have fun, not with the outcome, because sometimes, you know, like, the desk, like walking to the park, you get to the park, and the park is not that big a deal, or you don't even get to the park, because the walk to the park is so exciting, and every little dandelion and crack and ant, we're obsessed with ants in my house right now, I haven't figured it out yet, but of all, I mean, there's some rad bugs, I'm not a bug person, there's some rad bugs, but ants just are my thing. 
So last Monday, last Monday I woke up so ready to be intentional with my kids. So ready. And every morning I get up and I do PBJ, not the sandwich. Prayer, Bible, and journal. I do it every day because when I don't, I just don't have as great of a day. If I can get centered, it's great. That's one thing I intentionally do. And if you're not a morning person, I'm not saying you need to do this. But for me, I know if I get up at five and spend a good solid hour with a cup of coffee and the word of God, I am a better person. I am a better human being. And Monday, I am so stoked because that's our one day off as a family, right? And we are going to, whatever they ask for, we're going to say yes for the most part. That was just my goal, right? Whatever they ask for, you're going to say yes. But I didn't take that time in the morning, and within 30 minutes of my girls being up, they started getting a little whiny, and it literally took me an hour to, to lose it. You know, I chose to sleep in instead of intentionally get up. It took me an hour to be frustrated. They wanted to go for a walk. I was like, yes, we want to ride our bikes and scooters, and I thought, you never make it more than a block, but yes, let's do it. So I'm holding the bike pushing the bike, I've got the scooter over my shoulder, and I am so frustrated when it could have still been so fun. And the day proceeded that way, and I really couldn't help but think it was nothing that they did. It was all my lack of intentionality of getting the soul care that I need. But they didn't feel loved or pursued or wanted last Monday at all. So let's talk about 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. We're getting close here. This, this scripture, I actually just came across this morning and added in, okay? It's in our, it's in our Bible plan. There's Bibles if you want to look it up uh, at your table. I came across this this morning, and I thought, this is, what I, this is what I want every day of my child's life to look like. This is what I want to look like every day. It says, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. How fun would it be this summer if we literally were rejoicing always? If we were actually having fun always. I think that's, I think that's what he wants. I really, really do. So let's jump to Galatians 5, 22 through 23. Another one that I imagine if you grew up anywhere near the church, you've probably heard quite a few times. So this is a fruit of the Spirit. I'm going to read it to you through the English Standard Version, but if you want to follow along, it's 1004. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Lord, have mercy. I need more of that. Against all things... Against such things, there is no law. I hope my summer is filled with that. I hope at the end of the year, at the end of August, when the kids are heading back to school, I'm not rejoicing in them heading back to school, but we are all sitting in, this was, we all feel so loved. This was so joy-filled. I feel like I was peaceful and patient. I'm not going to do it right all the time, but I want to shoot for it, right? Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. And I would love a little more self-control. That would be fantastic. Barbecues are too good. So in order to do that, I think the only way I can do it is do something similar. And what, what Allie does isn't going to work for me in the afternoons. But i got to find my intentional time to fill up. Amy talked to us about getting real, about soul space, about filling up. And I think i got to get intentional about that. And I, I print it out so when you guys leave, you'll get to see... I printed out a reading plan. So it's all on the fruits of the Spirit, and it's really easy for families to follow along. It's one verse. It's one verse. So in your groups today, they'll talk through how to make that family-friendly. But before we break out into groups, before we close in prayer and break out in groups, I came across this video. Actually, Amy sent it to me, and it really, really spoke to me. So I would love for you guys to watch for just a moment. If you could have dinner with anyone, living or dead, who would you choose? Kylie Minogue. Oh. <laughs> Marilyn Monroe. Oh, God, I wouldn't have a clue. I oh, know, straight up. Yeah. Paul Hogan. Kim Kardashian. No, no, no. I'd like to have dinner with Justin Bieber. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's not coming to my house. So, um... <laughs> I'd have Bob Hawke. Dave Hughes. Barry Humphreys. Jimi Hendrix. 
people who have made a difference in the world, maybe Nelson Mandela at the dinner table. I don't know what he's going to say, I'm scared. If you could have dinner with anyone in the world, oh. who would you choose? Probably our whole family, like a whole extended family. Mum and Dad. <sighs> Mum and Dad. Does it have to be a celebrity? Could it be family? We love it. We talk about how school is. We ask mum and dad how their day was. Family. Yeah, mum and dad. Family. Yeah. Who would you guys like to have yeah. a dinner with? They just want to be with us mm. while they're eating food, which is pretty cool. They see us above everything. I'm going to get... Yeah. Yeah. Bit, bit of a message in it for me. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen that like 10 times. I still cried. What the heck? I was trying to like precondition myself and I still cried. I asked my, my oldest this question. I said, baby, if we had dinner tonight and it was just you at that table, who would you want around you? And she proceeded actually not to say her sister, but the rest of the family. <laughs> And then she said, Mommy and Daddy, and then her Nami and her Papa Joel and her Nana and her Papa, Papa Al, her two sets of grandparents. And she said, For sure, my great Grammy. And she said, Mommy, do they have to be alive? Because I'd love to meet Uncle Ricky, my brother who passed away when I was 10. And I thought, Dang it, my expectation for this summer is lake days, is building these beautiful adventures. And all she wants is a little bit of time with her family. They are so easy to love. They are so insanely easy to love. And it is so hard in this world to keep our eyes on that. Because every Pinterest page, every blog shows the 50 activities you've got to do with your babies this summer. Right? They make it so about where you go. My girl's in first grade. She came back from spring break talking about everybody's vacation. And I worked that whole week, but we had dinner around that table all week, and she had a great week. She got quality time with her grandma. She had a great week. She had a great week. We've got to be intentional and in loving them the way they need to be loved. We've got to stop with our high expectations of what we think we need to do and just love them. That's it. That's all we got to do. Sorry. Do any of you know Michelle Gobble? She taught me this trick that if you say poop on stage, you stop crying. <laughs> Poop, poop, poop. I don't feel like it's going to work. <laughs> Maybe it did. I don't know. Oh. Our God is so good. And that's all he wants. He doesn't have big expectations for you. You don't have to do anything. He just wants you. He just wants you. And how are we going to love our babies if we're not filled up? The creator of love is the only one that can teach us to love wholly and purely. So my challenge for you this summer would be to focus a whole lot more first on receiving the love from the Father who loves you so much. Walk out and be bold. Ask for that sign doesn't have to be a rainbow. It doesn't have to be a heart. It doesn't have to be anything. Maybe it's just a flower, right? Not just a, maybe it's a flower. Maybe it's a color. Maybe it's a person. But walk out expectantly bold that your father is going to pursue you, seek you, love you, speak to you. Walk out boldly in that. Get filled up with his love so that you can love your kiddos in that same amazing way. Let's pray. Jesus your love never fails. Your love is one of the only things in this world that we can truly wholeheartedly depend on. And Lord, I am lifting up every person in this room that they can feel your love. That they feel valued and pursued no matter what broken mess they are.
no matter if they yell at their kids, no matter what's happened yesterday or today, no matter what their past is, Lord, I pray that they in this moment right now know that you love them, you want them, you don't need us. You've never needed us, but you want us. You want a relationship with us, Lord. And I pray that they feel that, that they're overwhelmed with your love. And I pray, Lord, that we can pour that out on our babies, that this summer they feel wanted. They feel loved. And even more important than the love that they receive from us, that, Lord, they can feel the love you have for them, Lord that they can grow closer to you through these summer months and know how much you love and adore them no matter what, Lord. We love you so much, Jesus. <laughs>